We're streaming now, I think, I hope. Hello, everyone. I thought today I would um, spend the time in the summer heat to try and show you guys how to do the math in uh, Wobbly Windows. So I'm not going to do the actual implementation of Wobbly Windows in an operating system uh, like GNOME or KDE or something. I am just going to do the Wobbly Windows math and I'm just going to implement it all in a game engine called Godot. And this is to just focus on the math related to the movements. So um, as you can see here, I have a window. This is just a background image. It doesn't really GNOME. And the window here is, is not a real GNOME window. It's just a picture. However, if I grab it, you can see it's wobbling very nicely. If I grab it and <laughs> throw it around. And um, I thought you might, uh, you guys might want to know how to do the math involved with making something like this. And um, it's actually not a lot of math. Um, uh, the brunt of the calculations is going to be done by a shader. And uh, in this case, it's a shader with only 20 lines of code, like this. And um, the control itself that does the actual wobbly calculations or like the speed of the wobbliness is done here in a script. Um, but um, yeah, but I'm gonna do this from scratch so you can see how to do this and you can follow along if you want to do this yourself. In Goda, uh, you might uh, want to do that. And then, and then uh, you will have the whole process of, of doing Something as crazy as this. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, let's start. Uh, make a new scene here uh, from scratch. Uh, it's going to be a 2D screen, and we're going to make a user interface. And um, the user interface is nice because you can get the uh, controls and that kind of stuff, and we also get mouse interactions and that kind of stuff and we're going to need that um and uh, you you do that every time in godot you create a new scene you have to select what kind of scene it is you can select the 3d scene 2d scene use interface and other stuff um in my case i just want a uh i'm just going to do this over so just so you see um so i create a new empty scene and i create a use interface like that and um I want the background to be an actual uh, background, so I'm going to change this uh, type here to a texture rect, like that, and I'm just going to put the image of, um, I think, it, did I, uh, I, oh, okay, yeah, I need the wrong file, this is just the screen picture I took earlier today. And um, it's just um, when you, you do this, uh, it's important that you set the anchors as 0011. They're already set like that uh, from the default. And, there's, and then you also need to click on the expand, which, and what that does is it then resizes the image to the size of the, the window that uh, it runs in. So if I do it full screen, of course, the resolution will be full screen. If I just do it as a window, then this will be resized to the window size. So let me just show you that. If you go into project settings in general, on the window, if I disable full screen here, and I'll run it. Um, oh, I have to save the scene. I'm going to call this flappy or oh, wobbly. All right. And then you can see if I resize the window, the background image follows with the window. And that's that's what we want, uh, so that our code isn't dependent on any kind of resolution or size. Um, then we need another object, uh, where, which is going to be uh, the window itself. And, um, and that's also going to be a texture rect. And then... I am going to put the window here into the texture, like that. But uh, here it's important um, that the window um, 
that this texture rig that represents the window fills the whole screen because this is this is where we're going to do the wobbliness and um, in order to get the wobbliness to kind of go outside of the size of the rigs we also have to, to um, the size of the texture rig needs to be basically fill the whole screen just like the the parent control here and then um, to do that um, we will go to the um, uh, our anchors here and set them to uh, one and one and then uh, on the uh, margins here we're just going to say uh, zero 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 so now the window is shown uh, like that and then we need to set it to expand two and this this looks kind of wrong but it's right enough because we're going to do the actual shape of the window with a shader and there we have to look up the pixels um, based on uh, based on the size of the window all right so in order to do this we're going to make the shader first and um, you do that uh, here in Gota by going down in material uh, tab here you yeah, select the texture rate go down in the, let's just call this window here Let's call this background and like that. And then down here now on the window, we make a new shader material like that. And then um, if you click on it, uh, open click on the icon itself, it opens up like that. And here you can set the shader. And we're going to make a new shader here. And the uh, now it has the shader but the shader is actually saved on the object and we, we would like to have the shader saved as a file so that it's easier for us to find it over here and click on it so let's if you just uh, right click uh, or left click on the drop down here you can say save and let's just put this into the shader folder here and call it uh, wobbly shader yeah wobbly shader all right, so if you click on the wobbly shader, you can click on it here. You can also click it over here now. The uh, wobbly shader is here now in the file system. Um, you can see it's empty. And uh, what we have to do is we have to define what kind of shader this is in GoDrop. And uh, you do that by writing shader underscore type. And this is a canvas item. And I think we need a symbol like that. And then um, a canvas uh, shader is basically a very simple shader that only does the fragment uh, stuff. And in shaders, uh, the fragments are the pixels. So let's uh, just do void fragment like this. <clears throat> shader, shader code is a little bit like C code. Um, very similar if you know any. C, uh, C programming languages, then shaders are very much like that. And then, um, all right, so <clears throat> what we uh, need to do now is we need to look up uh, the, um, the pixels. So um, what this means in the shader, it, it means that um, this uh, function is run for every pixel on the screen. And um, And so, what um, if we don't do anything it's basically just showing the the the, the, the texture itself but then um, what we can do is we, we can um, uh, let, let's just try and show something on the screen uh, where we can control it so let's set the the color equal to uh, let's see the rgb let's set that equal to a big three and like that and then let's put the uv x coordinate uv Y coordinate and zero in here, maybe one, it's better. And uh, let's see how that looks. Yes, so what this means is the UV is basically the coordinate of the pixel. So as we go to the right, it's getting more and more red. Um, of course, the blue, which, uh, yeah, so a color is basically RGB, red, green, blue. So let's, if we set blue to zero, You'll see that the top left corner is black. The more right we go, the more red it becomes. And that's because the UVX coordinate grows 
as we go right on the screen. And um, the same thing with the Y coordinate. Um, it's black in the top left corner. And then as, as we go down on the screen, it gets more and more green. And um, you might think, how oh, that's strange. Why, why is, is, uh, is the red going in the positive direction and then the green is going in the negative direction? Well, that is because of a tradition in computer graphics. Because on old CRT screens, the cathode, um, the cathode uh, ray would start in the top left corner and go uh, right and go for each line going right all, all the way down the screen. And that is the reason for this. So computers were uh, originally uh, programmed to do computer graphics in this way, following the, the ray of the, of the cathode, cathode in the CRT screen. And it's just been that way ever since. And the, the, so that's the reason why it's like this. You just have to remember that Y is negative and starts in the top left corner. All right, uh, but let's just, um, let's just uh, look up the texture that we already have. And um, that you do with the texture function here. And um, there's already a, a variable called texture. That is the texture that is in the canvas item already. And um, if we put in the UV coordinates here in this function, it will look up um, the... Uh, okay, so here it says it, it can't match vector 3 and vector 4. And that's because the texture is a vector 4. And we are now specifying that we want to set only three components. But if we remove this here, we should be able to set all the components. And now we're back to showing the texture that we have had from before. All right, um, so we need to specify how large our window is and where it is on the screen. And uh, we can do that with the um, uniforms. Uh, it's called the, the, left, uh, the corner. And uh, this is going to be a VIX2. And um, let's just set this equal to VIX2. Uh, 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 and um, and then let's make one for the size uniform it's a two size it's going to be a bit of two yes and the size is going to be um, 0 0.3 comma uh, <clears throat> 0 0.5 and then um, so what we will do is we will make a new UV coordinate here um, and we'll just call it UV with small letters, and we're going to set it equal to UV plus the, the corner coordinate. And then we're going to use that over here. And then you will notice that the, the window pops up uh, to the left, and that's because we actually want to subtract the corner coordinate from here. So now you can see the, the corner of the window now starts in the middle of the screen and goes that way. And then <clears throat> we also want to set the size. And then we do that by saying UV uh, divided with the size. And that, there you go. Now we have set the size of the window. And the, um, and, uh, yes. And so the, the, the window uh, element is still the full size of the screen, but now the windows, uh, the, the position and the size of it is defined in the shader itself. And this is uh, necessary for us to be able to move the window, but also be able to give it its wobbliness. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> now what we want to do is we want to distort the, the UV coordinates based on the um, uh, based on how we move the window. And, and uh, what we need to do that is uh, we need a, a variable that um, that represents the wobbliness or the, the wobbly state of the window. And I decided to call this um, decay. Uh, and let's just, we're just going to give it a little bit of decay here. Let's see, call it 0 0.3 and 0 0.2. Like that. Um, oh, makes it two. Like that, and um, 
uh, if we just add this to the window, it will just move the entire window with the decay. But what we want to do is uh, we want the window to stay where the mouse is, and then we want it to in a, in a uh, we wanted to um, move depending on how far we are from the mouse, right? So we want the uh, the degree of the wobbliness, so to say, to be dependent on how far we are from the mouse. And then we do that uh, <clears throat> with a new uh, variable here. We're going to call it uh, uniform vector 2. We're going to call it handle. And we're going to set it equal to uh, 0 0.5 and, and 0 0.5. So we're going to hit, we're going to grab the window in the middle to begin with. Okay. And um, you might be wondering uh, now, why uh, why are these uh, variables um, these decimal numbers and what do they mean and the, and that is um that's a good question uh, when we handle shaders um the uv coordinate goes from zero in the top uh, corner to one in the in the full length so what this means is uh, zero is zero pixel and one in the case of full HD, would be the uh, 1920th pixels. So that is just a, a thing we need to remember. The, the the shader itself doesn't really know what resolution you have. The shader only kind of knows it in, in a relative basis. So from 0 to 1 in, and then from 0 to 1 in the height as well. Which means... Um, that the, the, these values, uh, when we get them from actual pixel values, we have to divide those values with the size of the of the screen. All right. Um, so that is what. And when I define the handle to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, then what I mean by that is I want it to be in the middle of the window itself. So in this case, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 is not the middle of the screen but it's the middle of the window. Now, I'm just going to do the math uh, that makes that makes sense, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Yeah, it, like you could do the math in another way. I just found this way to be the easiest. All right, so um, what do we do now? So let's say we want to, uh, we, we want to know the distance uh, from the current uh, UV coordinate to where the mouse is. Uh, and um, we're going to do that by just subtracting the handle from the UV, because this UV is going to be the actual uh, coordinate of the window itself. Uh, so uh, when UV, the small UV here we're looking up, when that is zero, that's going to be this top left corner. And when it is one, then it's going to be this uh, top right corner. Well, with the x values uh, one then it's going to be the top right corner and accordingly like with the y coordinates two right <clears throat> so there's already a built-in distance function so uh, let's make a, a, a float variable here float and we'll call it dist and we'll uh, call it the, with the distance function here and we're just going to take <clears throat> the uh, handle and subtract the uh, uv from that and that will actually give us the distance um, in very uh, uh, it might be length actually sorry yes it's length yeah it's not distance it's length uh, and um, just to show what the uh, that this does let's just uh, color the window with this uh, this distance just so you can see what this means so we're just going to set color RGB equal to <clears throat> uh, a three. Let's just put distance in here or dist in here. So what you can see now is the, the 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 handle is in the middle of the window, and the further we get away from the handle, the brighter it gets. And that is actually very useful because that's what we're going to use to move the window. So we can use this to offset the UV coordinate based on this distance. All right, so um, let's do that now. Let's say UV uh, plus 
equals uh, decay multiplied with distance. So what you can see now <coughs> is that the window is now being deformed with <coughs> with the the uh, with the um, Uh, using the decay, so the decay value is, is 0 0.3, 0 0.2, so it's going to be dragging in that direction. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> because the, this, this uh, distance is, is increasing, the further away you get, the, you get like, like this uh, kind of wobbly, kind of um, stretchy thing going, where it, it makes it uh, kind of just uh, deform de based on a, a circle, a circular uh, or the radius uh, increments that that you get away from the handle itself, and this is useful because then we can do the rest of the calculations from inside the uh, the script that we're going to do. See, a shader is uh, such that it doesn't know any state, it doesn't know anything about what's going on, and and, and it can't unless you send the information uh, from outside into the shader. The shader is so to say stateless. <clears throat> And um, the only uh, way that you can change this data is by putting in variables into the shader. And uh, that is actually what we've done here. This uh, uniform, uh, uh, this uniform uh, uh, name means that these variables will be ve uh, 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 changeable from the outside of the shader. So if I click on the window now, and I, I go uh, down here to the material. You will see here now there's uh, something here called shader param. And that is actually our, uh, those variables that we set there. So uh, if we uh, grab the decay here, you can see I can now, I can now uh, make the window uh, switch its, its offset or the, its decay uh, based on, um, on this value here. And the, I can also move the handle. So, uh, so all we need to do right now is we need to set once uh, the mouse is uh, clicking on the window, we need to set the handle, and then when we move the mouse, we need to do the calculations that uh, sets this decay, and and uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, physics simulations uh, to do that. Um, anyway, uh, let's just see how this looks now. If I run this, yeah. So right now it doesn't do anything. The window is just kind of standing there still in in a in a bent shape uh, <clears throat> so uh, let's start out with um, um let's start out with uh, getting the input uh, from the mouse um all right so we're going to add a script here to this window object so right click on the window and press attach script and um i'm going to put it in the scripts folder I'm going to call it wobbly window. Like that. And this is how the scripts look when you start out. Um, the first uh, thing uh, we're going uh, to do is we're going to get the material of the window. And the, that material is a, a shader material. And we're going to save that as, a, as um, an, uh, an, an uh, uh, a global uh, variable, oh, an object variable. So um, we're going to put that up here in the top. Uh, we call it var um, mats material, and then we uh, we're going to say that it's a shader material like that. And then down here in the ready function, this uh, called when the node enters the scene for the first time. This is this is called only once in the start. We're going to set the material equal to uh, the function get uh, um, I think it is material, yeah. Uh, yeah, math, of course. And then uh, what we're going to do uh, here in the beginning is we're going to uh, we're going to be controlling the size and the corner of the window from here. So we're going to make a variable here called um, mat 
uh, we're going to call it the corner as well, just like we did in the shader. This is going to be a vector 2. And it's going to be set equal to uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. And then, and then we're going to make a size as well. Vector 2. And then uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. I think that's, I'm just kind of guessing right now. I can't really remember what these values were inside the shader. Um, and then we're going to set it directly here in the, in the ready function to begin with. And uh, what you do is you take the material and then you say set, uh, <coughs> set um, uh, shader. It's sh shader, isn't it? Shader parameter. Um, actually, I might be getting a little bit of help here because it has recognized that the material might not be. Yes. This is a little bit annoying. When I set the material here in line 8, the material isn't necessarily going to be a shader material. So it's kind of overriding that I've set the type up here as a shader material. This is a GD script thing, but it is there. So it's going to be the corner. We're going to set the corner equal to the corner. And we're going to set the size equal to the size as well. Like that. So now we are setting these, um, and let's also set <coughs> the decay as well. Okay, and we're going to make a new variable up here called k bar k two. And then um, let's just see how this looks if we run it. Yes, yeah, so now you can see it's no longer wobbly or it's not no longer kind of bent into a shape. And that's because, uh, and it's also moved. And that is because we move the uh, we move the window uh, here to those coordinates, and we set the decay equal to zero. That that's what it's going to be initialized as. <clears throat> um, all right, so let's uh, make a function down here that where we're going to get the input. Sorry, input, and then. Um, this, uh, what this function does is it takes the input events from the, uh, from the, uh, the game engine, uh, and that'll give us the opportunity to uh, uh, get mouse input events and, uh, and all the things. Uh, all right, so, um, so uh, let's just get the mouse input event. Yeah, so if event is... <clears throat> Um, input event mouse motion, and then uh, what we can do there is we can get the relative uh, uh, coordinate from the mouse motion here, and let's um, we we will store that up here in uh, in a variable. So that's going to be the mouse relative, uh, yeah, mouse rel, let's just call it that, vector 2. And then we're just going to add it to it. So mouse rel, we're going to say plus equals event dot relative. What this, um, I may not have explained this, uh, but if you say plus equals, it means that you take the value and then you add it to the the mouse. We also did this in the shader. Uh, let's see if we can find the shader down here. We said UV divided equals size. What that means is you take UV and divide it with size, and then you assign the value to uh, <clears throat> the this variable. And it's the same thing down here. This is a normal programming uh, way to do this. Uh, I could also have said UV equals UV divided by size, or UV uh, uh, equals to UV plus the K multiplied with the distance. Um, and then, yeah, so 
up here we are, we're going to take the mouse the reason why we're going to do it like this is because there could potentially be more than one mouse uh, increment per frame in 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 uh, the game engine so every game uh, every frame is uh, uh, in, on my screen it's 60 frames per second but the mouse is actually intercepting mouse movements at a thousand frames per second so if i move the mouse i want to accumulate all the mouse relative movement until and then use that um, for, for the movement of the window if i had just done equals here then some of the mouse movement ticks would have been missed so then up here in the process this is a called every frame as it says here delta is the lapse time since the previous frame so what what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say uh, um, the uh, movement of the mouse i'm going to call that mv is going to be equal to the mouse relative, uh, relative relative movement here however if you remember before the um, the shader uh, handles everything in a relative coordinates from zero to one and the, the mouse movement here is actually done in pixels so what i need to do here is i had to divide this uh, with the the screen resolution uh, so i'm going to do I'm just gonna copy that from uh, here. Oh, just gonna copy that from here. Uh, viewport size. I couldn't remember what it was for here. So I'm just gonna divide this here by uh, get viewport dot size, and um, and then I'm gonna just take the mouse relative movement and multiply this with zero, setting it back to zero. <clears throat> this um this means uh, that uh, for every input i get i'm adding um, movement mouse movement to this mouse relative variable and then for every frame i'm picking it out and i'm recalculating it into the shader parameters and then i'm setting it back to zero here so that next time we accumulate all the next mouse movements all right So what we can do now is uh, we can we can take the corner and then we can add add the movement to the corner here plus equals and then we can set the corner here and what this should do is uh, this should actually make it uh, so that we move the window and uh, it does not um, uh, Oh, I was in the I was in the scene where I had everything fixed. Yes. Okay. So here, this is oh, that was the old scene. So this is the new scene. So right now, the the uh, the window is moving with the mouse, as you can see. Uh, I don't have to click on the window to move it. It's just kind of moving with the mouse all the time. And uh, uh, for now, that's uh, that's fine enough. And uh, what I could then do is. Um, I could also add the decay uh, to the window. Um, so if I say uh, decay plus equals movement here, and I set the decay as well, then we will see that the the window just kind of stretches out in this kind of uh, uh, elastic manner, right? And and um, it doesn't it never really kind of wobbles. It's it's uh, and that's this is where we need to do a little bit of uh, uh, calculations. So I'm I'm just going to remove that shade. That um, if you go down to the wobbly shader here, just going to comment out this thing that does the shading, and so we get the window like that. And um, as you can see, we're getting pretty close to, to getting something that uh, kind of works the way we want it to. Um, <clears throat> All right, so what we need to do is simulate a little bit of uh, kind of physics movement here. So the decay needs to uh, use um, a speed value um, uh, from, from the mouse movement 
and then uh, that speed value is going to be what uh, what moves the decay instead. So uh, let's go up here. Let's go make a new variable here. Call it speed, and set it equal to vector two. And um, yes. All right. So when we move the mouse to the right. We want the speed of the decay to increase with the uh, the mouse movement, okay? Um, and uh, so basically, we just instead of say decay uh, add movement, then we say speed <coughs> like this, and then we uh, add the movement to to it like that. And then what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, add the speed uh, to the decay. So we say uh, speed like this, and um, that looks kind of crazy, right? Um, <laughs> that's, that's definitely not what we wanted to do, um, but that's because we need to uh, we need to add a bit of um, uh, uh, friction to the to to the speed. So uh, what we need to do is we need to say speed. Uh, multiply that by 0 point, <clears throat> let's say 8, not 9, let's multiply that with 0 0.9. So this means that the speed will uh, con constantly um, slow down. And, um, and <laughs> then we get something that looks like this. And that, that's, I think, definitely, <laughs> it, it looks kind of funny, but that's, this is definitely not exactly what we want, right? Uh, so I did the math wrong here. Uh, right, so we need this. We also... We also need to... I forgot how to do this. Oh, right, right. So, I, I actually added the movement to the decay, and then I took the decay and subtracted that from the speed, and then I added the speed to the decay. That's that's kind of interesting, actually. Why did I do it like this? Um. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Yeah, let's just do the same thing here. So we're just going to do the decay. And then we're going to add the movement. And then we just put it down here like we did before. Yeah, that, that kind of works. Let's right, so see. I mean, I just wrote this before, and now I can't see the logic in myself. Uh, all right, so the decay, we add the movement to the decay in order to, when we move the mouse, we kind of shear the window in the other direction. And then we subtract the decay from the speed uh so that we kind of get the speed to work in the other direction yes and then we add the speed to the decay and multiply the speed with 0 0.88 uh yeah so this is kind of this is the way that it the the decay is uh kind of uh eliminating itself by adding a bit of speed to the decay. So um, we're storing a speed value here, where we, we store the, the, the speed of the decay into the speed value, and then we add that to the decay, and then we multiply uh, the speed with 0 0.88. This is what kind of gives it, um, uh, this is what kind of gets it to stop wobbling. 
So if we don't do this, let's say if we just uh, comment this out, I'm just gonna put it stick in front of it, then you see it'll just continue. <laughs> so it'll, it'll, it will never stop wobbling unless uh, you can kind of, un kind of undo it. And the, yeah, you can't, of course. So this, uh, this, this um, multiplying it by 0 0.88 will kind of add some friction to the wobbliness to make it stop. So the higher this value is, the less friction there is. So if I set it down to 0 0.6, you will see that the wobbliness kind of stops immediately almost. And then um, if I set it up to 0 0.99, you will see that it the wobbliness continues on, but it actually eventually will stop. So this make it the higher the value, the more the elastic it is. So let's just set it to 88 again, 0 0.88. That is kind of still kind of wobbly. And then, um, yeah. All right. So, uh, but we're close to getting there. Now what, what we need to do is uh, we need to register the mouse click <clears throat> and, um, and we only, and, and then we want the, uh, the position of the mouse, mouse to, uh, determine what the handle is going to be so that <clears throat> where we grab the window is where it deforms from so to say so right now it does it in the middle as you can see here but if i if i say if i click on the corner of the window i want it to deform from that corner and then um, we can do that down here in the input event so um, we're going to say if input is uh, action just uh, pressed uh, fire I put the um, the fire uh, thing on the left mouse button then um, <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to get the uh, mouse global position and then uh, what we need to do is uh, we do need to do a little bit of the math with that we actually did inside the shader in order to get the mouse position relative to the window <coughs> so uh, let's call this uh, handle and then we, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the corner from it and then we're going to divide um, the size of the window uh, from the handle and then we're going to set the handle in here uh, handle and handle so I think this should work, but this will only work when we press fire. So <clears throat> let's see, now we move the window, but the mo window is moving all the time. And that is, um, that we don't want that. We, we only want the window to move when we uh, are holding the fire. So we're going to make a variable up here that we uh, call move window, move. Let's see, call it move, set it to false by default, mm. and then down here when uh, we have pressed fire uh, move is going to be true and then else uh, if now we're just going to if input is just released fire <coughs> then we're just going to set move to false here that so what this should do is um, this should make it so that the Window moves all the time. That's not how to do that. Oh, so up here, uh, this is where we store the mouse movements. So we only want to store the mouse movements if the uh, move is true. So we're just going to say and move here. Move. So if it's a mouse input event and move is true, then we're going to do that. Yes. All right. So now it doesn't move if I move the mouse, but if I click. <laughs> um, something really fishy is going on. Um, I think I calculated the handle wrong. Yes, so let's just outcome the handle. Let's just outcome this. 
like that. So, yes, so I'm not setting the handle now. So if I grab the corner, it's still kind of deflecting from the center of the window, whereas I would want it to do down there. Uh, so I did this wrong. Uh, get global mouse position and subtracting the corner. Oh, but I forgot to divide it by the window size. So this is still in pixels and I want it to be relative from zero to one like that. I think that should do it. Yeah. And if I resize the window to full screen. So <clears throat> there you go. This is how you do the math to do wobbly windows. Yay. All right. I hope um, you found this interesting and maybe you, this will inspire you to do some, uh, <laughs> some shaders or some math related programming yourself uh, at some point. And um, yeah, I hope you liked it. Bye-bye.